All right, Rabotai, we are back from our two-week hiatus. Mm -hmm. uh, happy to be back. Oh, they're also happy. Thank you, thank you. And uh, after two weeks of not, uh, after the, the first week we missed was after Purim. So we had to oh, detox. And then uh, the week after that, some people still had to detox. And uh, so we're here after the third week, Rosh Chodesh Nisan. So first and foremost, our shiur was sponsored. Um, but especially for the hostages, may they come home very soon. There was supposed to be a deal that was supposed to literally happen like today. And then at the end, Hamas said, we're not doing it. Psychological warfare, you know? They're uh, no, they holding up this way. Hmm? Yeah. They, they're already like this. How they holding up? They're not like this, by the way. Already their, no? their bazaars are open and everything is... Don't worry about them. They find their way. They're not worried about you. Don't worry about them. <coughs> um, so, my Hashem release all the hostages and may Amen. Amen. there should be an end to anti-Semitism in the world. Amen. And uh, there should be tikkun for the for the, for the holy sparks and the dusha. May all the nitzud dusha come out of the kliba. A person should always, always daven, even if he doesn't know kavanot, even if he doesn't know kavanot. In the beginning of his day, before he starts korbanot, he should do gilui dad. To say, Hashem is brav. All my mitzvot today, I'm doing like kamash kinta ma'afera alushkat uzein. Or even though I don't know the kavanot, may it be like I did know it. It's moil. If you do that, it's something. The Ben Ishchai made a whole prayer on that. They called it Ribbon Alma. It's right before Korbanot. In Aramaic, Isho. So the Samechemim should understand it and lay off his tefillah. So, Mo'il is Giluidat. Giluidat means to, to say. Right? Like, a person does Giluidat once a year before Rosh Hashanah. He says, every nether that I make this year that I didn't say Billy Nether should be cancelled. You guys ever did that? You never did that? We do it here all the time. Okay. Every year, once a year, before Rosh Hashanah, mm -hmm. you have to get up. Let's say they do Hatarat Nedarim. Once a year you have to do this. That's it. Before Selichot, they start. Say, we get up in front of three people. I'm telling you right now, any nether that I make, I'm letting you right now, it's canceled. And anything that I didn't say, Billy Nether, should be Billy Nether. So what's called Nedarim? Huh? Kol Nidre also could work for that, but the problem is with Kol Nidre, people don't have Kavana over there. Right? So, for example, let's say, like our Aladia says, a person doesn't know something is a Khumra, and he starts to do it. A person fasts Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, not knowing that it's a Khumra. And then he comes to the Rabbi, he did it three, four times already in a row. It's a Rabbi, I need to do Atar Nidre. Rabbi can say, you don't need to do Atar Nidre. You don't have to do it. You if you did the Gilui Dat, the beginning of the year, it's there for the coming year, coming up. So you don't have to do the Gilui Dat. It's always very important to do that, right? Because many things we do, we don't say Bili Neder, and we do it in the form of a Neder, right? Like Mitzvot that we do three times in a row. Even wearing Tefillin of Rabbein Otam, right? If a person doesn't say Bili Neder, and he does it three times in a row, then he has to do it. Tefillin of Rabbeinu Tam is very important. Every married man has to wear Tefillin of Rabbeinu Tam. At least if he's married, he has to wear Rabbeinu Tam. At least. And uh, Rav Mazu says, once the kid is 13, you already have to uh, buy him Rabbeinu Tams. Once the kid is 13. Wow, what about Rashis? Don't you start Rashis at 13? No, they start Rashis at 11. 11 years old. And then when you get married, you can give him Shimusha Rabba. And if he becomes a father, you can give him Shimusha uh, Rabba of the Ra'avad. And if he becomes a grandfather, you can give him another pair of the Gra, the, another Khumra. Basically, there's a, about 24, I think there's a Da'a, there's, there's like 72 different ways you can make tefillin. Khumra, this, that. Has anybody, there was everything? There was a rabbi, Rabbi Yosef Volto, who used to wear 24 pairs, 24 pairs of tefillin a day. 24 pairs. But he was saying, but he wasn't, his wife was not all there. He was like single. So when you're single, you have a lot of time on your hands. You could do these things. <laughs> your tefillin is taking care of your kids. When you take care of your kids, by the way, 
your children. So remember I taught you guys many times that all of our lives is connected to Yudkei Vavke. Right? So we have... I want to teach you a hack. You know those hacks that they have? I'll teach you a hack. Using this hack, you can make everything you do in your life a mitzvah asemi de oraita. You could be a walking uh, mitzvah factory. Right? So you have Yud, K, Vav, K. So I told you guys many times that Hashem made the world in Yud, K, Vav, K, right? In His image, right? But Selem. Elohim. That Selem of Elohim is Havaya. The Tzelem of Elohim, Gabriel Chai, Chai, the Tzelem of Elohim, how did Hashem plan it in a, in a person's family? The husband, the father, is Keneged, the youth. So we call it Abba. Or in other words, Chokhmah. The first He is Keneged, the mother. Bina. Bina. So Ima and Bina. The Vav, six, right? How many women, how many children did they give birth to in Mitzrayim? Six. How many kids did they, how many people came out of Mitzrayim? 600,000. How many years is the world? 6,000. Six, six. Everything is six. Why? That's the, the system that we're metaken. That's Za. That's connected all of us. Right? That's za, that's the sun, right? That's the ben, mm. the ben. Or, in short, you say za. And then the last system is the bat, right? Bat, or nukva shechina, right? So when Hashem says, I'm coming down into this world to be with you guys, He's only revealing Himself in the last hey. Not the other letters He's revealing Himself within to you. Only the last hay is revealed. That's called the Shechina. The last hay of God's name. Right? So when Hashem says, V'shachanti betocham, it's only the last hay. Through that last hay. You can't go higher than that last hay. That last hay, also coded, is called the word Zot. Zot. V'zot ha-Torah. You want to get to the Torah? First you have to go through Zot. How do you read God's name? You say Amonai. So that code word of the last day is also Amonai. There's many codes. That's what we learn in Sha'are. All right. All right. That's the whole point of the book. To know the different codes. Right? The more codes you know, the more you can dive into Hashem using those coded words. So those are reached only after the network? And uh, I'm sorry. And Anshek Hesed Hagdola knew how to put together the prayer in a way to use those coded words correctly. That way if you say, no, I'm not going to use their nosa. I'm going to pray my own nosa. Guarantee it's what not going this? anywhere. Right? I mean, you'll be kind of a mitzvah of tefillah, but it's not really changing anything because the world is working in certain formulas, right? Yes or no? That's it. So that last hay is the most important. That's that last hay. It's also called Beit HaMikdash. So if the Beit HaMikdash is destroyed, there's no divine presence in this world. So Hashem says, even though there's no divine presence in this world, if one person is in learning Torah, if he's learning Torah, just learning Torah, you sitting, you go home, I don't know, you open up a Tehillim. What could be more simpler than a Tehillim? Right? Oh, you start to read. So what's the difference if one guy learns or two guys learns? <coughs> if two guys learn together, not only is the Shekhinah with them, but they're also written down in God's book. It's a special Ma'ala, it's called Sefer Azikronot. God's book of remembrance. The two guys learn together. So you go, okay, two guys. Very special. What about ten? So what's this? Ten. Ten. God comes and he's waiting for you already. You get it? Not only are you written in Sefer Zichar, he's waiting for you to come. Now you understand the difference? Why are we down with ten people? We want the Shekhinah to be with us. Not only in a small way. Every level is a different revelation of Hashem. The fact that you don't feel it, that's your problem. You don't do the right hachanot. You don't prepare yourself correctly. Correct? If you prepare yourself, you will feel. It. If you don't, how do you prepare yourself? Not in one day. It's continuous, right? How do you become a master barber? In one day? One year, two years, three years, 10 years, even 15 years, 20 years, until you become a master. So too, the process of revealing Hashem, you have to be, it takes your whole life. It's a master process, right? 
Getting a bracha from a Baba Sali is not the same as a, getting a bracha from the Rabbi of Ashur, right? Unless it's a Sadiq Nistar. I don't know why he's one of the Lamed of Tzadikim. I don't know. But it's not obviously not the same thing, right? Because he was able to refine himself more. In general, the more you break the body, the more the soul is revealed. The less you break the body, and the more the body is stronger, the less the soul is revealed. It has the less of the power to reveal Hashem. Hashem is inside of you. You should know that. He's not anywhere else. He's in you and he's right next to you all the time. Why? If I would tell you Hashem is, is in Shamayim, you're a kofer be'ikai. You're a complete kofer. You have no chilek le'olam haba. What do you mean? You mean there's empty space between you and God? That means God is limited? You're a kofer. If you don't believe, and you have to work on yourself to say this to yourself, that God is here right now, you're a complete kofer be'ikai. Now, to a person who just learns Gemara or Mishnah all of his life, these things will seem very, you know, very far-fetched. What do you mean Hashem is here right now? Yes, He's here right now. What if I tell you even deeper? You're not really here. You're everywhere. You're not, you weren't here to begin with. What is it's it? really Him. It's illusion. You're just a fragment of His will to reveal more of his existence. Himself. What if I tell you, you're the, you're, you're the one that's stopping his... So what does Hashem say? Out of the whole world, I have 15 million people, and out of them I have about 1 million. Out of those 1 million, I have about 100,000 who learn Torah. And these guys are my ambassadors to this world. And they have to be my strong people. And I send them every generation, about 100,000 every generation. 100,000, 100,000, 120,000. I send it every generation, and instead of you doing your job, what are you wasting your time on? Shush leak. Netflix? Netflix. Oh, if, you're, if you're wasting your time on Netflix, you have a lot of... Oh, shush leak with Netflix, you mean? No, no. It doesn't go together, you know. It doesn't go. No Netflix, no Batir. I've always said, a person has to understand that even if you don't enjoy your time, I'm learning Torah. What's in your Twice a week I could give my time to learn Torah. Twice a week. What do you mean twice a week give you time to learn Torah? If your father gave you 24 pieces of chocolate and he said to you, please give me two pieces back. And you said, no. What is he going to do to you? Show you the backhand. What do you mean? I give you 24 pieces. You can't give me two pieces? Hashem gave you 24 hours a day. You're chayav. Listen to my words. Chayav. To give him one hour in the morning and one hour at night. Chayav. You must. That's the first thing they ask you after you pass away. Hakavata itim la Torah kedusha. If you're not kove itim la Torah, you failed the first test. What's kove itim la Torah? What is that? Kove itim la Torah is not what you think. So let's say I learn Torah all day. I learn Torah all day. That's still not considered kove itim la Torah. It's not considered. Koveh din Torah means a time where I close my phone. Even if I have a customer that's gonna come in and is willing to buy all my merchandise, it's my set time. Right now, I have a date with Hashem. Specific time. Specific time. This is my time in my day. No one can touch me during. It. It's called I am in a relationship with God, and right now, no one can touch me. I have a charuta during this time. No phone or nothing. My wife. I'm sorry. Right now, I'm inside the shiur. You can't touch me during this time. That's called Kovea. Nobody could touch you during that time. There was once a story. I forgot one big of the Chachamim Ashkenazim. I forgot his name. They asked him, how did you get to this level of being Zerbita He said, I promise you, it's all because of my father. My father was a very regular guy. Very regular. But he had Kovea Itim La Torah. He was in, in Europe during the Depression. He was a uh, salesman of the Orot. I call him Orot. So? No, or right. uh, leather, leather. He was a leather salesman. And the, t and the times were terrible. And we were eight, nine kids at home. Not like today, if you have five kids. Oh, oh five kids. Right, that eight, nine over there was a regular thing. And we were eight, nine, we were hungry, we were terrible. We were, we, Mamish ate bread and drank water. And uh, it was my father's time to learn Torah. And he had the merchandise at home. And there was a guy who came in and he said to, to my mom, he was learning Torah during it. Was, it was Kiyut Itim. And now they're saying, listen, I want to buy all your husband's merchandise. And my mom couldn't handle herself. 
he started knocking on the door come out for two minutes at least give him a price let him sign something and he she came in and he said you can't come in right now and he said listen there's a guy who wants to buy all the merchandise your kids are hungry and he said i'm not coming out right now if i have to sell it i'll sell it anyways but right now is my commute to the torah you know when i saw my father do that i really understood the importance of learning and setting a set time for learning torah and that's how he became a gadolador that story, there's a story always that's etched into the brain. Now, it takes a lot of, t- a lot of power. That means the father, in one way, was stronger than the son. Because if it wasn't for that father's resilience, his son could have never reached such a level. Now, his, his son became a big daughter. I forget his name right now. It'll come to me. But look at the power of father. That, 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 that's why the Chachamim, this has to do a lot with today's, the new year, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, Today is the day that the Mishkan was put together. I mean, today is the day that the, that the divine presence was revealed. It's a very it's Rosh Hashanah today, according to Rabbi Yoshua. Today is Rosh Hashanah, right? Okay. Now that's besides the point. That today is Rosh Hashanah. That's besides. I mean, today is a very big day. So, so the yard site of Nadav and Aviyu, two of the greatest Nishamo that ever lived. Moshe Rabbeinu told Aharon, "Now I know they were greater than us because God chose them to be the Kiddush Hashem, not me and you." So this is a very, very big day. And f- tomorrow morning, hopefully we won't have to rush out of the Beit HaKnesset, but if you have a couple of minutes, in the back of the Sidur, you're going to see, Kriya Le Chodesh, Le Chodesh Nisan. You have to read it, you have to open the book, you have to say over there, you have to read the parasha of Chodesh Nisan. Today, tomorrow morning, you have to read it. And you have to read, the Nisim, you have to read over there. 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 By reading those Korbanot, you're actually as if you are with them right now. You're connecting to them. You're being with them. And I said, I have no idea. Do you? After Shachari, we read it. First, where is it? It's in the end of it. I mean, in our Sidurim, it's the end. It's the Chodesh Nisan, it says over there. In the back, it's a whole big, every day, small limud. And there's a year at Son after that from the Shla. From the Shla. That says to take out us from the Galut. Guys, this is the moment we come out of the Galut. I mean, I hate to be a prophet. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a son of a prophet. But... I wonder, there is some weird things that are going on over here. We had that earthquake, we had that that eclipse, we had that uh, it's, there, it's Rosh Chodesh right now. There's a war going on in Eretz Israel. You know what the Khatam Sofer said? Nah, there's a bloody moon coming on on the last day of Pesach. You know, the, the Khatam Sofer said, when there's a war in the world, don't ever pray that it should finish. Pray that it should come out for good for the Am Yisrael. Khatam Sofer says that. I can't even quote you. I think it's in Drashot the Khatam Sofer. He says, never pray that it should end. He says, pray that from that will come out the Tzmach Purkanev Yikarev Meshichayev. It's a very important thing. Because, uh, listen, to be honest with you guys, at the end of the day, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to ask you, how much did you really want me to be revealed in this world? So you're going to say, I Dave came to Shi'ur, I heard Yud Kei Vavke, the Ben, the Bat, the Abba, the Imma, Zav, the Nukveh. I says, boy, did you dive in for me to have a house down in this world? I have a freaking squatter in my house over there for 2,000 years. I have a squatter over there. Imagine you had, a, you had owned an apartment and you had a squatter. What would you do? How many lawyers would you, would you, would you bring out of the... You would get... What's that lawyer? The... Johnny, there you go. See, you're How did you know I was thinking about it? Johnny, you would take a lawyer that could rip the heck out of those squatters, right? That person. <laughs> He's not a lawyer. <laughs> He's a violinist. <laughs> you would take whatever you can to get him out, right? HaKadosh Baruch Hu has a squatter on his house for the last 2,000 years. Shikut Shomem. What have you done? Now, there's no Tikkun Chatzot right now. That's it. If you didn't do Tikkun Chatzot for a whole month, that's phenomenal. For two months right now, that's it, you're done. Patur. You can't, not Patur, well, Patur, you can't do, there's no Tachanun. And then the old man, it's like Chola Moed. You can't do Tikkun Rachel during Chola Moed. So there's no, what can you do? But, just because there's no Tikkun Chatzot doesn't mean you can't mention in Shema Kolein HaKadosh Baruch Hu, please re- rebuild your Beit HaMidash. When you say Tishkonum B'toch Yerushalayim HaKashet Yibarta, have Kavanah. Dab and Tadosh Baruch Hu, say a pair of Tehilim a day. I want you to know one thing, the Gemara says, if you don't ask, you don't get. If you don't ask, you don't get. It's Nikudah. Midah, Keneged Midah. You want to get married? You have to ask. If a kid, Person who has kids, right? He has kid wants to get a very expensive gaming station, right? How much could he bug the Abba? Oh, oh. he'll take the dam out of the Abba, right? Till he gets his way. Like this, you have to be a nutnik with Hashem. You gotta take the meats out of the Shamayim. What are you gonna get in return? That's your problem. 
That's, uh, that's, that's on you, not on anybody but, else, right? We can also force something that we're not supposed to get. Exactly. And then it's a problem. Are you yes. Are you so how, how, how's the balance? You don't. How do you do? Go with Hashem. I used to have a student who used to say when he's done with he said, Hashem, <laughs> may I get for free <laughs> and may he be your will? <laughs> he used to say, Mozart Matan Hinam. Moshe Rabbeinu, didn't he die in 515 times to get into Eretz Yisrael? Hashem told him, Atkan, Atkan HaKafah Shev'eid. You can't die anymore. Huh? Hashem didn't tell us to stop. He didn't tell us to stop. He said, so keep on going. <laughs> if he tell you to stop, you'll stop. Right? I'll tell you guys a crazy story, you know? Hashem works in very crazy ways. This morning we had a tikkun at 5.30 in the morning. Baruch Hashem, we said Kaddish at the end. But Baruch Hashem, some guys came and they have the zechut for being here. I was the one who thought, it wasn't my dad who thought of the tikkun. I thought of the tikkun. It wasn't him. It was me. It was me. Because I saw the situation and I said, listen, we need some rachamei shamayim. And uh, Baruch Hashem, we made his shit. We said, we did the shofar, we did the akafot. In the middle of the tikkun of Yosef Dayan, if you guys ever pay attention, pay attention, there's a part over there, every hakafa you say your wish. You say, Hashem, please give me letovad this. Then you say, Hashem, do give me parnasa, and you say a name. Hashem, refuash lema, you say a name. You say, lilu nishma. So I'm saying, and I always say lilu nishma, I say my grandfather, who was my sanda, God rest his soul in peace. And I say, um, my other grandfather, and I say, my grandmother, so I say, my... Immediate family. I don't see my great grandpa. I don't. I don't even know them. I mean, in the good or bad way, I, I just don't. I see my grandparents. But the seventh hakafa, for some reason, Nereus came. Uh, name came to my head, and I haven't thought about him in like a long time. I said, "Keep saying Nereus Ben Svetlana." I said his name, man. I go to yeshiva in the morning, and I'm wondering so why did his name just pop into my head? But I didn't think too much of it. I'm sitting in yeshiva, I'm giving yeshiva to the kids. And I tell one of the kids over there, you know, you had a fight with one of the Rebbe's and the Rebbe got very sick. I said, I hope you didn't have Kapeda on him. I was joking with the kid. I like to do sometimes a little... Generals. Yeah, not Jaganos, but, uh, you know, to stoke the, the, the flames. I don't like to call it Jaganos either. But I, so I, so I stoked him a bit, you know. He's like, you know, Rebbe, I'm going to tell you something. I said, ah, every time somebody hurts me, I pay attention. Something happens to them. I said, hi, like who? He said, remember Neria? I said, yeah. Two years ago, I worked for him and he never paid me. He just came to my head this morning. I said, how much do you think he owes you? $170. I take out of my pocket $170. I said, it should be Rudy Shmato. He said, be mochel oto. And he was mochel. Could you imagine, like, it wasn't such a, like, uh, you know. But you know, suddenly the name popped into my head. I'm wondering why it popped into my head. I go to see, and suddenly out of his mouth came such a story. It wasn't a story with uh, lightning bolts and eclipses and this and that. It was what we call divine, divine providence. It was divine. It was divine. It was divine. for no reason. You understand? You understand? It was, for me, it was like amazing thing. Like, you know, a person could hold something, you know, like, he owes me money. The person has been dead for two years. He's like, no, I forgive him, my friend. He's like, he's like when you say you forgive somebody, if you in your heart you, you don't him. forgive him and you still remember it, you don't forgive him. How do we know that? You think Yosef HaTzadik didn't say to the brothers, mecholim lachem, mecholim lachem, mecholim lachem. Of course he forgave them. In his mouth he forgave them. But Moshe Feinstein says it could be that he didn't really, inside of him was still... And they came back as who the ten, the ten Mars, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Ishmael Kohen Gadol, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. You have to forgive a person. How do you forgive somebody? For sensitive people, it's very hard to forgive. The Gemara says a person who learns Torah, he's very sensitive. Why? Torah is fire, and he turns into fire. Fire wants to eat somebody up. So what is the? Yeah, you could give me something. The Gemara says. What is your job? Listen to me, Gavriel. Look at the Gemara Masechet, Tani. The Gemara says, What is a per- Talmud Chacham's job? To turn himself to Barzel. Thank you. You know what Barzel is? Steel. Metal. Iron. We did three words for it. Steel, metal, and iron. 
Could you believe that? You know, I learned that Gemara years ago. You know, Masechet Ali is one of the easiest Masechetot. If you ever want to do a Masechet, Masechet, start with Masechet Ali. It's very easy, a lot of Agadah. And that, that small part of Masechet Ali stuck with me. Because really, the truth is, when you learn Torah, you turn into fire. You want to always be right. You want to prove your point. You always want to make yourself like you're on top. I had that case once when I was in Kolel teaching. And not teaching, learning. It's Kavruta. We got to a part. I was talking about Kohanim over there. And the part, over there says Kohanim, they're very angry people. So it's a machlok at poskim. Do they really have to be angry or they don't have to really be angry? How, do you control, how could you prove a real Kohen? At the end of Beit Yosef says, really Kohanim have tempers. Naturally, it's kind of like a... It's, it's in their nature it's in to be. It's innate. The Prisha says no. They don't have to be angry. Well, what is this? To be angry. So it's a suit to be angry. And then the Gemara says over there that real people with good yichus, how you say yichus, uh, genealogy, comes from Babel. <clears throat> Babel, from Iraq. Baghdad, back in the day. Back in the day, the Parthian kingdom. And I'm saying it, and there's a Kohen sitting next to me. For some reason, maybe he misunderstood me as if I was saying that he's a fake Kohen or something like that. He got so angry at me. To the point where he used to lock me out of the kolo. Wow. To that extent. He really got... At the end, we made, we made up. At the end. But he really got angry at me. And the person who learns Torah, it's Micha, it was learning. So why are you getting so angry? Well, you're learning. Why are, you getting, why are you taking it to the heart like that? But if you got angry, you used to lock me out, you wouldn't speak to me for a long time. Mamash kaka. Person with smicha, Torah, mitzvot, masim tovim. I don't blame him because Torah turns a person into fire. What do you got to turn yourself into? What do you got to turn yourself into? Barzel. Barzel. Kakoi water. We don't want to get rid of the fire, we want to refine you. Hmm? Iron, iron. You got to make yourself into iron. Somebody tells you something, don't be bothered. It bothers you. Try not to be bothered so much. Somebody hurts you, don't be angry. You gotta work on it. Right? It's not that easy. I'm not saying, and if you do that, it's gonna help you in Shalom Bayit. It's gonna help you with your kids. It's gonna help you with your friends. It's gonna help you with your in laws. I was once at a. Not a Shabbat Khatan, it was either Shabbat Khatan or Shabbat Barachot. So the guy got married to this girl, pretty girl. <coughs> the guy was seven years older than her. You know, one of those guys who are very smooth, but they just, they know how to, you know, sweep up the, how to get their way. It's the father, that guy was a Kohen. He gets up, and he's giving a toast. And he looks at the Hatan, middle of everybody, next to everybody, he says, the Hatan, I've asked you, I don't know what my daughter saw in you. Mm-hmm. In front of everybody. Could you imagine the power that the Hatan needed at that moment? To hold himself, to restrain himself. It's the, <laughs> the opposite. If you would have drank, you would probably have punched him in the face. <laughs> you know the restraint you need to have in that moment to be barzed. I don't know if the Khatan was a Tamil Chacham, I doubt it. But he must at least have Derek Heretz. You obviously grew up with some Derek Heretz that Pada taught him when you're in front of the adults, you shut your mouth. But you need to have his dad. This generation has no Derek Heretz. What do you make? What do you do? This is, your brother almost beat up somebody in school today. He said, if you were my student, I would smack you across the face. This generation has no dark hairs. Zero. So what do you do? You gotta, what are you going to do? You don't want to end up in jail. I had a friend once that ended up in jail. I promise you. He hit his kid. And she went to the ACS. And he ended up, and had to take anger management classes. First they took him to jail. They took anger management classes. Yeah. This generation has no direct heritage. Like and, and the whole, I mean, generally. 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 There are, of course, your team in a club who, generally. people who learn Torah, who have, who have Yerat Shamayim. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. That's it. So, to have Yerat Shamayim, Yerat Shamayim doesn't grow on trees, Gabriel. As the Gemara says, Hakol bide Shamayim, chutz mi Yerat Shamayim. You hear? Hakol bide shamayim, chutz mi erat shamayim, right? How does a person get erat shamayim? If a person does a mitzvah like a robot, he has no erat shamayim. And as you guys sitting here in this class, 
I mean, you guys hear the sugar many times, right? And I always tell you this many, many times, many times, many times. Is, guys, the Torah is not supposed to come from one year and come out the other. You're supposed to use it and utilize it. You're supposed to think about it, ponder it when you leave the class. And I want to tell you something. Try this. Uh, try doing this. This, uh... You hear about Yud Kevavke, how everything is Yud Kevavke, for example. You see how the mitzvot are each connecting to each part of Hashem's name. Everything means something. One day go outside, even when you go to shul, not this shul, somebody else, somewhere else, let's say you're somewhere else. Look at religious people. Look at the world, you're in the train, look at the world. With the knowledge that you know, look at them and see what are they doing? It's empty shells. The world is an empty shell. They, they don't do anything for anything. They, it's mamash, a, ro a robotic world. Nobody cares about anything. It's just to live for the next day. It's just to gossip for the next person. I'll give you an example. A gossip example. My kid goes to daycare. Baruch Hashem. You know, we're Bukharians. So, you know, if you take a kid and you go like this to him, like that to him, say, you know, teach him a little lesson, you know. Cha. So there was this kid in the daycare. I don't know, he was three, four years old. And the, one of the workers over there was putting it in the, uh, recording it. Recording it. And she recorded how this second teacher put the kid to sleep, and the kid was waking up. She went like this with her leg to the kid, like, go back to sleep. So very famous. Yeah, very famous. It's in my kid's daycare. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not in my kid's class, but a different, different class. This video went so viral. The teacher was fired on the spot. I, th I told my wife, I think the woman is suicidal. I think she should be put on suicide watch. They ruined that woman's life so badly. So badly. I thought that... She, you were going to hear the next day on the news, she, she jumped off some bridge or something. She did something wrong. What did she do? What? She didn't do anything. Zero. And do you know who was the woman taking the video? She just got fired and she wanted to take revenge on the, t on the, the, on the system. So she took the video to show what's going on, to shut down the whole thing. Now, you tell me, is there any Yerat uh, Shamayim in this? Do you know how many conditions you have to go before you post such a video? Or go to the and we believe in Hashem? <clears throat> they ruined that person's life completely. How could you do such a thing? I could tell you cases in the Shulchan Aruch, in Pitchei Tshuva, if you open up in Evan Ezer, your jaw is going to drop. What things the Chachamim said before you say it, how, you don't kill, if you see a, a guy run after another guy inside a, and he goes inside a building and he comes outside with a bloody knife. You don't even, you don't, he's, he's not liable for the death penalty. Didn't you didn't see it. There wasn't two witnesses. You didn't warn him. Maybe he didn't know the Chumra of it. Maybe they were fighting and he thing. Maybe he's like, who knows? But it's religious people. Okay. You know why? There's no Yerat Shamayim. And how are you going to have Yerat Shamayim if you don't learn Torah? Just by wearing tefillin, you're going to have your Rach I promise you, B'Shem Hashem. If you wear the most, if you wear the Ariya Kadosh's tefillin every day for the rest of your life, and you wear his talit and you dip in his mikveh, you're going to be a zero in your Rach if you don't study Torah. And that guy who wears the cheap tefillin and wears the cheap talit and barely goes to the mikveh, but he spends every day learning and wants to know Hashem, he will reach a high level. So really, two hours of Torah a day is not enough. Really, that's not enough. Really. I say this to myself. It's not enough. It has to be much more than that. And when you're going to go to Shammai, they're going to say, did you finish a Masechet in your life? I gave you 80, 90 years. Today, the average life expectancy for a guy, a guy, women live longer than men. It's like 85 years old. What are they going to say? What are you going to say? Did you finish a Masechet? I that. They're going to say repeat. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Of course. 
Nishamuzgir. Nishamuzgir. Oh, my Nishamuzgir. Oh, suddenly I believe in the Nishama. And I believe in the Harin. I believe in everything. How does your body remember? Okay, you're going to go in. You're going to be sitting in the back. What do you think you're going to be in the front? Next to Rav Ashi, Ravina. Next to Rav Shiri Barabaye. Oh, the back is good. The Gemara says you're going to be ashamed to what you could have reached. Yeah, you're going to go up there with your Rolexes and your vacations. Of course, you're going to go up there with all of that. I call to affair, do it. But over there, the Himlo Machshirim is Leklum. Leklum, go. But could you at least go up there with one Masechet? They're going to say, tell me the 613 mitzvot. Could you tell them that? Okay, take 20 of them. You could do 20? You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. And you can't say, no, there are four times the Torah says to work filling. That doesn't count as four mitzvot. Okay? The fact that you say out of 613, you can think of 20 plus, and you're thinking about it, it says a lot. You should know also, you know, my brother teaches in Satmar Yeshiva. In Satmar Yeshiva, in Williamsburg. There is, uh, he teaches eight, nine year olds. First day of Yeshiva, you know, Hasidim. They asked him, No. They asked him, uh, Do you know the 613 mitzvot? He said, Do you know it? He told him, No, my brother. Said, Do you know it? 11 year old spitting out them all the 600 meters. Now, I'm not saying they have your right chamai. I'm not saying that it means, but it's a good story. look at the capability you have. I'm sure you could tell every brand of glasses in your store, more or less. Where it is, Where it is even, you could tell. <laughs> I'm sure you could do that. Right? Imagine next to every brand you put a mitzvah. And suddenly you start remembering, you know, this is in the mitzvah 11, mitzvah 12. Right? It's a good idea. But we're going to go up there, we're going to be embarrassed. We're going to say, Hakabati itim la Torah. Look at Nadav and Abihu. Gdole Israel. According to one opinion, what did they do wrong? That's another opinion. They more halacha lifne rabam. They said a halacha in front of their Rebbe. Which color is this? Can't do it. If he's your Rebbe Mufhak, you cannot. What's a Rebbe Mufhak? They were not there, though. What's it between a Rebbe Mufhak and a Rebbe Sheina Mufhak? Because what's Mufhak? So I ask, what are you saying uh, looking like that for? He's we'll looking at me like, you know what Mufhak is. No, what if you learn with the rabbi? Hmm? What if you learn with the rabbi? Mufhak? Rebbe, Muf, Rebbe Sheino Mufhak. Rebbe Sheino Mufhak. He's not Mufhak. Is somebody who even taught you one halakha? <laughs> Which one is that? That's Sheino Mufhak. That means he's not your set Rebbe. You understand? Wait, 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 wait a second. Rebbe Sheino Mufhak is a Rebbe that even taught you one halakha. Like Achitofel taught David one halakha. says when you go to shul, you have to go beragesh. You have to go with trepidation. As we say, bevet Elohim nahalech beragesh. You learn from Achitofel. Say, what do you call them? Alufim, Yudaim, Ori, Biribi. What do you do to Rebbe Sheino Mufhak? If he passes by you, you stand up for him. Like this. Even taught you one halakha. That could be your normal friend. Yes. You get up everybody teaches you one halakha? No. Oh, no. You have to get up for No! What's Rebbe Shemuhak? Right? Rebbe Muhak is a Rebbe that taught you most of one subject. Mm. Most of a subject. Preferably halakha. Preferably halakha. Well, it, you, for example, you have to, when you're setting aside time for Torah, you have to be honest with yourself. You can't spend your time learning agada, right? If you see you only have an hour to learn a day, you have to spend your time learning what? Halakha. Do you know the Shulchan Aruch? You see all those red books over there? You see all that, all those red books? It was written by Rabbi Yosef Karo. His birthday is coming up, the 14th of Nisan. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote those books that every man, woman, and child have to review it once a month. It's not so far away. It's only about 400 years ago. That's like a blink of an eye in history. Like this. It's a blink of an eye. Every, and it's in English now, by the way. You don't even have to see it in Hebrew. Now, I want to ask you guys a question. Look how embarrassing we're going to be. Okay, you don't know Masech, Yerusha, Mitzvot. You're going to get up to Shamayim. They're going to ask you, do you know Aleph Bet? Check. Do you know Nikudot? Check. Do you know Ta'amim? And they're going to say, okay, open a book, read. 
You don't think they're not going to do it. They're going to do it. Is there an audience there? Yes. <laughs> All of your ancestors. Ooh. All of your ancestors. Your Bobo, your Bibi, your Saba, Safta. You can even have the Benish. Maybe you're the descendant of the Benish High. Who knows? Maybe you're the descendant of, the, of Ravina and Ravaji. Who knows what you're a descendant of? Oh, how far is it going to go? All the way? I have no idea. Huh? Yeah, people who passed away, I'm talking about. No, he's saying, what are those people that don't know how to read Hebrew? How are they going to look at you? <laughs> yeah, who said they have a zikhut to even be there? You're right. Some of them don't have a zikhut. Some of them don't have a zikhut. But they're going to be there. Of course there's going to be an audience. Wow. And they're going to ask you, do you know how to read? You know, when my dad, when he sits over here in the Sudash al table and he says, do you know Aleph Bidya Aleph I don't really say anything to him. But I don't say anything because I feel that he's wrong. Sometimes I don't say anything because I feel it's a lost cause. So it's not a good thing. It's a bad thing that I don't say anything. He still believes in you guys. I... <laughs> not so much. <laughs> you understand? He's a person. So when I don't say anything, it's not because I, I disagree with him. I agree with him. If Hashem gave you 85 years to live, hopefully 120, you can't go up there and reach my Israel. Hashem belokeinu Hashem ehad. Without Russian transliteration, because Hashem doesn't read Russia language. I mean, he knows it, but they don't work over there in the Rashaim language. Right? What are you gonna do? You understand? But yet, you demand from Hakadosh Baruch Hu all the wealth in the world and all. Why? Because you put on film today. Good, put on film. You're right, hundred percent. It's a mitzvah, and you're scharcha harbe meod. Two tefillin. Two tefillin. You say, oh, every time. When I used to for 10 minutes, today the rabbi was davening in the morning. He was davening 10 minutes when I used to. I'm like, you know, it's a weekday, hello. Go like, oh, listen. And one thing I give him is perseverance. <laughs> he doesn't look at himself like that, by the way. But perseverance is perseverance. You know, most people who go into pension, they, they downgrade. You know, they, they lose everything, they become less, they lose, they start to lose their cognitive abilities. You understand? A person has to always be active in his life. That's why we have the Torah Akadosha. But even with that, person could lose his. If you don't train yourself right now to sit and learn and be connected to the Yusod de Haba, which is Chokhmata Torah, when you're going to old or when you're going to get older, you're not going to learn Torah, I promise you. And this King Solomon said, Zechorit Boracha Bimei Yaldutecha. Remember God when you're young, don't remember when you're old. Right? Even when you're going to get old, it won't leave you. The things you learned when you were younger will never leave you. The things you learn when you get older, you're going to forget. So, do you know there is a, there is a sigula just to say Aleph Bet? From the Berish Chai. I'm serious. Just say, just say Aleph Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zayin, Chetet, Yud, Chav, Mem, Sofit, Nun, Sofit, Zayin, Kamatz, Patach, Tzeres, There's just saying those things. Is that you're creating olamot? I have the book. I'm gonna bring it tomorrow. So if you want to see, I show it to you. So not read. Even just saying Aleph Bet, but obviously you need to know how to read. Understand? I'm sure. So, huh? The Shon Chachamim brings it down. Tikkun Erev Rosh Chodesh and Tikkun Rosh Chodesh in the book of Rav Salman Mutsafi. He brings down the name of the and he tried to say these things. Okay, I, I want to say one chidush and we're gonna end with this, Rabbi. Okay, today is Rosh Chodesh. I know I went a bit in the Musar. Okay, it's good. You know? it's good, it's all good. But uh, I want to say one thing about while we're reading on the subject of the learning of the Torah, Kedusha. When a person learns Torah, what should be his kavana? So first of all, you should know one thing. Just like we say we do it before we uh, after we dive in, because the in, in tefillah, in tfi, I'm not gonna erase this part. In tefillah, you, it's like you know when a person is is getting bless you, he's getting ready for the wedding. He's getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. And then suddenly you get to the zivu. Not you. You know, you're getting it ready for it. Right? You had your zivu already. So, but also a mikvah night and everything. It's the same thing, right? So you just, what's, the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the apex of the wedding, right? The part that you're not there for, right? What the Ashkenazim call the yichud room, right? right? When, you're, when the chatam and kala is alone, when they, when they have... When they have kisufin for one another, right? So, so too in tefillah, the whole point of tefillah is to get that vav hey, that vav in the hey, 
connected. We need to connect them. Now, they won't connect until they get power from the Yud and the He of God's name. Yes. All right? So without the parents giving them that push, let's say, if you want to say the mashal of Abba, Ima, Ben, and Ba, mm -hmm. without the parents giving them that push, they don't want to connect, right? So a guy could be a couch potato, the mashal, his whole life, until he's like, get out of here, do, do, get married, do something with yourself. He's not going to want to do it. So in, in Sod, we call it Kabbalat Mokhin. When the parents give the kid that push, that do it, it's called Kabbalat Mokhin. So he goes from a six, he has to grow up, so he becomes now a nine. He adds three. Now he will only be complete to number ten when he gets his Nukva, his Shekhinah, right? Where's this right? from? Huh? He's six, he's a Vav, he's Zab, right? The letter Vav is equal six. Chesed, Giborah, Tiferet, Netzachot, Yisod. Like he, but he's not complete. He needs another four to be complete. So three, right, he gets from his Abba and Ima, right? His, the Yudke. Then he will only be complete though once he gets his Shekhinah, right? Wife. Which is his wife, obviously. And that's why, like one big Chabad rabbi said, a rabbi that I really like very much, he speaks really good things. He said like this, the most important thing in your life, and I'm not trying to be a feminist, because I'm not a feminist, because if I was, then there would be women over here, and I'll be saying this. There's no woman here, and trust me, no woman listen to this. So, so I'm saying this to you guys, for you guys, and only you guys to understand, the most important thing in your, in your life is your wife. And the second most important thing in your life is how to keep your wife, right? Because if you have nine without 10, you're incomplete, you're incomplete right? And if you have 11, it means you have a something on the side, then you're too much <laughs> and you're gonna get ruined, right? So that Rav said that, he was a, he's a very big Rav. He's right, okay? Because we're all working like, to pick up the Shekhina, to pick up the Shekhina. Chodesh Nisan is such a day of, of Geulah, the whole month is Geulah. Because there's no even Tikhun Chatzot, the Shekhinah is not in Galut during this month. But Bichlalut, it is in Galut, because we still don't have the Bet I don't want to get up on a tangent again. So, on Tefillah, the whole point is to get to the Zivug. Now, you cause a Zivug in your Tefillah, you're going to get a Zivug. Midah can get Midah. Where does Zivug happen in Tefillah? Two main places. Number one, you guys all know. Shema. Zivug HaKolel, the big Zivug. Ah, Where in Shmona Yisrael? Yeah, Shalom. Yeah, Hamad. Yeah. See, at the end. The, 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 the wedding is at the end, right? The Zivug is at the end. Everything is just a build up to the Zivug, right? Baruch Atah Hashem. Hamevarech Atah Moesot Bashalom. Amen. Right? Huh? Of course, there's many Zivugim over there too. There's very, but these are small, right? I'm talking to you, I'm making a Zivug, right? But the Zivug of Zachar ben Nukva, the big one. The big one that happens in Sim Shalom. But that's small. That's small, guys. It's small compared to the next Zivug. The, 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 the Zivug that I just said is nothing almost compared to the Zivug that happens in Nefilat Apayim. And let David Elecha Hashem. So you say, Vayavor Hashem al Panav. You make a big Zivug. And that big Zivug is then broken down. It's so big, it needs three separate Zivugim. When you say, It's such a big zivu. It's called Yisrael Velea. It's not even Yaakov and Rachel. It's a, it's, it's a mashal. It's such a high level. It's, it's like you caused a really big thing in Shamayim right now. Right? That's why when we have the Etzara, what do we always say? There's a big thing happening in that moment. And that big thing kind of like breaks down into three subcategories. One is in Le David Alecha. That's the Nefesh. Second one is in Ashrei Yoshe Betecha, when you say the word Bakol. That's the Ruach. And then Lam Natsiach Mizmor Le David, Ya'ancha Hashem Bayom Tzara. That's the Nishama. That's the Nishama. And then when you say uh, the Shir Shel Yom, Kaven, Alim Nishabeach, you're bringing that down to, to, to yourself, right? That's in Tefillah. Right? Now, to do all that, to make the big bombastic zivu, what do you have to say before you do v'yavor? You can't go inside the wedding dirty, right? You say, v'yavor. Right? You say, oh, why? How are you going to go into zivu dirty? You need to go to the mikveh. You got to break it. Break it. Break it. Git, git. That's in tefillah. In Torah, you don't need all these kavanot. 
Torah is, by the way, Chodesh Nisan, we don't have the hour, so how does it happen? It's such an amazing month that happens by itself. It doesn't even need you to do it. It's automatic. It's automatic. You, bless the trees. you have to say the words, though. Quite blessing the trees. But just by saying the words, it's already happening. It's amazing. Chodesh Nisan. Chodesh Nisan, Chodesh Nisan. In Torah, when you're learning Torah, I'm going to teach you a hack. You also have to come to Torah prepared. Right? Person comes to learn Torah. This one falls asleep. This one gets bored. Why? How does your nishama, that's God, your nishama is godly, not love godliness? It's supposed to be a magnet. You ever see a guy who really loves learning? He's a magnet. He can't stop learning. He's davening, he has to hold a book. He's, he's finishing the door. He, you see him walking in the street, he's holding up. He's, he's listening to, he's, he's a, it's a magnet to him. How do you not feel that? You're a Jew, we're all telling you how you're from the end of Baruch Hu. How come you don't feel that? You know why? You got a blockage in the, in the veins, in the, in the arteries, there's blockage. How do you clear that blockage? So when you go like this, or somebody will go like this, I go like this, Mansapa. You don't have to copy me, you go like this too, right? When you go like this, when you hit, when you hit your heart, all the blockage is in your heart. When you say Anna, your Pegam hits in 22 letters of God's name. So we say Ashamnu, Aleph. We try to break open the Aleph. Bagadnu, Bet. Gazalnu, Gimel. And like this, we do 22 times. And for the ones with the extra, we do five more times, right? Maradnu, Marinu Devarecha. Why? It's Mem Sofit and Mem. To break open that letter. That's why when you do the Zivuk, everything is open. It's ready to go. You feel like it go up. So too, before you learn Torah, you also have to say, we do it. What is this? Is it just Kisad? Learning Torah? Learning Torah is godliness. This is all your Olam Haba. This is a goy can't learn Torah. What do you say? They once had a goy. He made himself a Jew. The rabbi found out that he was a goy. How did he find that out? Everybody when they learn Torah, they go like this. He was the only one sitting like a bull. Eats. <laughs> a bull, right? Because there's no fire in him. It doesn't move him. It doesn't move him inside. He found out he was a goy. He found out again. He was a goy. This is not normal. Jew when he when he learns, he moves. He gets, You're moving. You can't stop moving. Look at that! See, he's a living, living proof. <laughs> he's still moving. <laughs> you just me. So, before you learn, try you have to say, "We do it." You have to open it up. Some of my words, Rabbi. It's kafah hayim. Before you learn, try you say the Shem Yehud Kuchab Rehu You don't do any kavanot. Say, say with your mouth. The Shem Shem Yehud Harini Bali Limot Torah. Let Taken Et Shorsha B'Makom Elion. You want to go deeper? You say La Hamshich Or Yisod De'Abar. To bring down, the, you know where the Torah comes from? From the letter Yud of Hashem's name. It's the highest level. It's or a ta'amim. The light of the ta'amim. Lam shikh or yusod ava, lam tika dinim akashod. Shed dine le'a. To be mamtik the dinim of le'a. Why le'a and not Rachel? Le'a is considered alma de'it kasiya. It's dinim kashim over there. Or a Torah is mematik the din of the highest, the highest caliber. Vino ha'am Hashem elokeinu. Even if all your life, says the Chida and Shem Ali Dolim, you say Bereshit Bar, let's say you walk in there, Bereshit Bar Adosh Madaris, Bereshit Bar Adosh Madaris, let's say, pick the worst Pasuk in Chas Shalom, the worst Pasuk in the Torah, the mother of Amalek, was who Timna? Va, you say all day, Va'achot Lotan Timna, it's Pasuk in the Torah, Va'achot Lotan Timna, Chida brings this down, Shem Ali Dolim, all day, Va'achot Lotan Timna. You're making thousands of mitzvot of Limut Torah. Thousands. Imagine what you're gonna get up there. Now, still you gotta learn Hebrew. You gotta learn how to read. You gotta finish Masechta. You gotta keep on going. You gotta keep on. No, what's the ikar? Because we're not getting younger. The next eclipse that's gonna be in New York, we're gonna be either in Beit Hamikdash or Beit Hamikdash Hayyon. So this is Jimmy's mind. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna be the Tami. Jimmy's mind. May bless all of us, guys. To be mamash le'ayin matar. May we be zochet to feel it. Amen. That's all I can say. May we be zochet to really to amea chayim zachu. May we be zochet. May we may we all be zochet lebiat mishal tzitkenu. Give us the ema. Barat zara. Zivugim agunim. Yisrael gedolot. Panasav shefa. Cholat zacho letaken. Ed naran chay shalano. Kedzenu. Amen. 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 Am